Hello friends, uh, I am Dr. Siddharth Parma and this is Mumbai Pain School and uh, welcome to another episode of Sit Talks. So in this uh, video, I'm going to share uh, about another exciting topic. Just let me share my screen now. So the topic is radiofrequency ablation that is RFA for uh, coccidinia. And uh, this is uh, a very uh, rewarding uh, topic because if you solve this issue which your patient comes with then it's going to be absolutely awesome for yourself your patient as well as your practice so uh, to start with uh, coccidinia coccygodynia tailbone pains are just uh, uh, one and the same thing and uh, simpson in 1859 has described this condition which includes uh, symptoms like pain and tenderness around the sacrococcygeal region. Uh, out of all the patients of back pain, around 2.7% will have uh, coccidinia. And the treatment is difficult uh, because the causes are multifactorial. Uh, the predisposing factors are excessive weight, uh, the female sex is more predisposed uh, with the ratio 5 is to 1. And of course, uh, childbirth makes uh, vaginal delivery uh, makes the condition uh, much more commoner. So if you study the applied anatomy, the ganglion impar is a solitary retroperitoneal ganglion, which uh, represents the fused termination of the paravertebral sympathetic chains and it is located at the level of coccyx. In addition, the sensory relay station of nociceptive stimulus from the pelvic and peroneal zone is this as well. And for perineal cancer pain arising from rectum, vulva, and prostate, uh, the, uh, as well as the chronic non-cancer related pain such as coccidinia, chronic pelvic pain syndrome, this is a, a very important target. Moving on to the uh, nerves around the coccyx, uh, the lower sacral spinal nerves, uh, you can see, as well as the coccygeal nerves, uh, they, uh, they come and innervate this region. Uh, anteriorly from the sacrococcygeal plexus, the nerve supply is there, which in turn arises from the ventral rami of the S4 and S5 sacral nerves and the coccygeal nerves the termination of which results in the anocoxygeal nerves. The autonomic nervous system uh, is uh, the fibers are from the sympathetic nervous system, uh, the paravertebral sympathetic trunk, which as I have told you, terminates in the ganglion impar. In addition, we must know about the uh, attachments to the coccyx. So this picture is from the uh, Gray's anatomy. And if you see, uh, there are the attachments of the coccygeus of the levator ani uh, on the anterior surface, as well as the, uh, the gluteus muscle uh, is on both sides, as well as the sphincter ani externus is uh, on the posterior surface. So you can see that uh, these are these are uh, uh, very important muscular attachments. In addition, uh, the anocoxygeal uh, ligament attaches at the tip, uh, as seen here. This is when the pelvis is viewed from below, and that is bottom up. And this is when it is viewed from the top. That is a right picture. Uh, that is top bottom. So if you can see the this coccygeal uh, coccygeus muscle is also seen as an attachment. Sacrospinous ligament is in very close proximity uh, and you can see that uh, gluteus maximus muscle uh, also has an attachment. In addition, uh, if you see from top, uh, you can see some of these structures, but also uh, some other structures uh, can be seen. You can see the coccygeus uh, muscle here, uh, which is this muscle. Uh, in addition, uh, you can see the various other fibers which, which uh, comprise of uh, levator ni. Now, uh, there have been various classification which have been proposed and it was thought that uh, if you get a bent coccyx uh, in sitting or standing position, 
then probably uh, you know it can explain the symptoms this is not always the case however there have been classifications uh, radiologically uh, on basis of which uh, the uh, etiology has been attempted to be explained traumatic etiology is one of the most common uh, so posterior uh, luxation hypermobility and spicules they are uh, supposed or they are uh, implicated in the etiology childbirth as i have already told you infections and tumors of the coccyx which are actually rare but they are also uh, rare causes so this is how you label the uh, the vertebra here so you can see this s1 so just see the uh, disc and you will be able to make out so this is the sacrococcygeal region and uh, many times this is fused so they found around 50% incidence of fusion here uh in adults and on the other hand the c1 c2 is only 12% fused so uh this is a potential target so 90% management uh, can be conservative in most patients but uh, the rest of the patients they will require minimally invasive procedures uh, many procedures are described the simplest one being the just the block you give a la and steroid uh, then the next uh, is uh, you put a neurolytic agent like maybe alcohol uh, but the more precise treatment involves the radio frequency ablation or even cryo ablation is described uh, in some cases especially for uh, referred pain the cordial epidural may also work uh, if these symptoms fail to uh, if these procedures uh, you know uh, fail to elicit a good response uh, now then surgery can be uh, done or it can be advised however the results are uh, you know not very well proven uh, also if there is no spine and pain physician available uh, in that case also many times a surgery has been uh, done in patients so for the radio frequency ablation technique uh, your area of interest is highlighted here uh, there have been many techniques which have been proposed Uh, so plancarte et al he used a bent needle through the anococcygeal ligament uh, vem et al through the sacrococcygeal ligament via the trans sacrococcygeal approach uh, directly into the retroperitoneal space this is the common technique uh, which many people use munir et al modified this technique by putting a needle inside needle technique and uh, making it uh, a little better uh, foy et al uh, uh, found out as i have told you that 52% versus 12% uh, uh, fusion uh, if you compare this is at the s5 c1 that is sacrococcygeal junction and this 12% is c1 c2 that is the first intercoccygeal joint icj so uh, so c1 c2 is another uh, possible approach and uh, toshniwal et al they did a needle through needle by a short thick introduce a needle in this as well uh, a paramedian approach is described by huang et al which uh, in which we go below the transverse process and foe and patel added the cox uh, screw maneuver to this technique so if you see the little picture uh, it is shown uh, that how the needle crosses through the uh, disc and once it reaches ahead and you give a good dry there is a comma shaped dry spread which indicates uh, that the position is proper and thereafter the the uh, neurolytic or the rf or whatever you want to do can be done another point to understand is that when we sit the coccyx has some sort of movement uh, so dynamic some clinicians thought that it's a good way uh, if we can uh, diagnose this and document this so they started to measure it, uh, the angle of uh, the coccyx uh, with the sacrum you know, when the person is standing versus when he is seated so when you sit uh, the coccyx may be bent when you stand it may be uh, slightly straightened so this angle was measured however it found it was found that it also has poor correlation to the outcomes in the rfa i'll just quote a paper in sometimes Uh, as i was mentioning there can be a spicule of the bone which can uh, be painful and also there is a complication which is there because of the referred pain 
so this referred pain is uh, going to uh, cause a lot of issues uh, because it's difficult to uh, uh, differentiate it from the uh, pain which is arising from the local structure so this particular paper from sava et al uh, published in 2018 shows that the uh, this dynamic patterns um, they do not have much effect on the rfa treatment results so we do not routinely recommend that so how do we proceed actually uh, most of the patients uh, will be managed conservatively but the next best step is uh, mipsies uh, which i have described before and uh, the surgery is probably the last step so we follow a very algorithmic approach uh, to describe the technique uh, if you see in ap and lateral view you just mark the uh, the uh, go in the tunnel view stay midline and in constant ap lateral views you enter uh, the uh, disc and once you are through and through the disc of the s5 c1 or the c1 c2 whatever level you are targeting uh, you will experience a slight give and keep on injecting uh, the dye till it comes out in the proper shape and uh, when you get this dye flow immediately uh, start the uh, medication whatever you want to do rf or if you want to just give a local and uh, uh, steroid or if you want to uh, give a neurolytic agent everything is possible so there has to be a special mention of late non responders that means the patient had relief for initial few weeks or months and then they started having the pain again and for these patients the most common cause is incorrect placement uh, of the needle and uh, or maybe you have given only the medication so the in that case also the relapse will be there so these are amenable to treatment and you can repeat the procedure in these patients another thing is that uh, a subgroup of uh, uh, authors have recommended that diagnostic procedure should not be done uh, because it unnecessarily uh, prolongs the um, uh, you know treatment duration as well as the cost so in future directions uh, uh, lot of uh, interest is uh, being generated in pulse radio frequency ablation still yes still although some of the papers they found negative uh, evidence uh, for prf however there are some papers which have found a positive evidence and the debate is still on so uh, uh, in which patients you want to do the prf and which patients you want to do the rf Uh, it is it remains to be seen so mostly there exists subgroups and it is any which ways uh, a comparatively less common condition uh, however as pain physicians uh, uh, you will get more of these patients because they'll be refractory difficult to treat and as a result you should be very much uh, aware these are the references which i have used uh, throughout this talk the secret of the get getting things done is to act so join our mailing list uh, just uh, uh, join the whatsapp group just mail us if you don't have the link uh, also uh, suggestions and comments are welcome just type uh, below uh, whatever uh, comments you have for this particular video or if you like to see any other video in the future and of course uh, this is a precursor or this is a helpful video if you want to uh, attend the mumbai pain schools uh, pain journal club and uh, uh, hoping that um, this this video will be extremely helpful uh, to you all now uh, with these words i end this talk have a good time